Okay, so now I've got everything pressed really well. And see, there's the dot that you will not be able to see on yours because you're not gonna do it like that. But anyway, see how nicely that pressed up? And then when it, it folds over like this, so that you've got, no, your seams are not showing. And see how you wanna get that nice and smooth. And then right here where it starts to reverse, then at the bottom half, you can't see your seam. So anyway, get it all perfect, how you like it, how it will look good. And then what we do now is we come over to the next seam. This is what makes this tailored um, collar so unique. So here's the next seam pressed open. Have you ever done that before on a collar? The answer is no, you never have. And this one as well. Okay, and, and so what you're gonna do now is you take this pressed seam open, it's pre and you lay it down on top of here, open. So by keeping that open, and we'll now sew those together, it um, makes this nice and flat and smooth. And see, so see how we got that bubble going? So now when I fold that over, see, look at how nice that looks. So let's talk about finishing off this seam. Okay, so what you're gonna do is press these open, and then you're gonna line them up so that the seams match. Okay, and then you're gonna take your pins and you're going to pin it. So it's like you're pinning those two layers together, okay? And you just pin that all the way along. So it goes this way, anyway, and you just keep, and keep it open. See now right here, it doesn't wanna stay open, but I will force it. And I may not have pressed that one quite as good. So keep that open right here and you'll just stitch that all the way down to the corner. So I just go ahead and, and um, pin it good. Okay, so you're pinning it right next to that stitching. Okay, so now the next thing you're gonna do, after you get those neck seams all together, then you're gonna come back and you're gonna thread a needle and you're gonna double thread it. Remember how we don't often do double thread. Only when we're sewing on buttons, hooks and eyes, things like that. Okay, so you're gonna, I'm not sure where there's a loop de loop down here. Okay, well, skip that. All you do is just, there, got that fixed. Okay, so we're gonna go like this, double loop, and I use a thimble. I recommend them. Once you used one and gotten used to it, there's no going back. And when I was taking tailoring back in the day, we had to use a thimble or we were, we didn't pass the class. No, I don't know. Okay, so now we've got that. You're going to pull out those two layers and then you're going to do a hand back stitch. Now a hand back stitch is the closest hand stitch that we have of being as strong and similar to a machine stitch. So what you're gonna do is you go down, I'll just kind of go over here. Okay, and you keep those together here. So you go down and you're still doing it right close to the seam, but not but not on the seam. See how I'm so you come down and go about a quarter inch away. Okay, and then you come up and you go back an eighth of an inch and forward a quarter of an inch. So you're always, so every stitch is actually done twice. So again, get that nice and smooth and try not to get little loops or anything there. Okay, and so now again, I'll come back an eighth, kind of back where I started um, and where I, where I came up and then I'll go forward a quarter. So I go back an eighth and then forward a quarter to where the thread is and then forward again another, I mean eighth. So it's back an eighth, forward a quarter. That's what you're doing. And that's why it's called the back stitch, hand back stitch. And be careful of your thread. You don't, if you get, if you get too long of threads, then it gets really hard. So you're better off to do half. So see now, I go back an eighth and forward a quarter. Okay, now I'm gonna take this pin out. Okay, and if it helps, I mean, I just pin them along that line, um, but you just kinda wanna pin it like that. So, 
it, it doesn't, you can't really pin it this way. It doesn't stay, but my fingers, I can keep it together. So anyway, you're going to do that. Do this hand back stitch. Okay. And again, back an eighth, forward, a quarter. Now you might say to yourself, can I just do it on the machine? The answer is no. Because number one, you cannot get this close with all this, because your bulk, there's a lot of bulk on this side, hardly any on this side. And you want to be right next to the seam. So really, hand stitching can be therapeutic. And the good news is you're going to be able to get it so precise that you won't have to redo it three times. Because sometimes when you're machine stitching things like this, it's very hard to be extra precise. So I'm just going to keep going. The nice thing too is that, so you want to keep going and you're going to go into the corner. So see how I've got it pinned here and see now here's it open. So again, I'm just going to pin that and because they're both trimmed to three eighths, your edges should match up good. So match up your seams and match this up. This, I got to push that down and match this up see right here okay so push that down push that down and you may see now see those edges i got to trim those because that's going to be too bulky and so trim part of that okay and then when you get to this side like when you get to the corner you can push that part in and you can actually nice thing about hand stitching is you can go right into the corner here. So I would just keep going all along here. And you've got it pressed open good, so it should stay open. Okay, this needs to be steamed just a little bit right there. Anyway, that's what you do to finish. So when you're done, this this is closed off. See now I've I've only, where did I stitch? I started like here. I just did a little bit. But you can see how this is closed here. And I think I just went to here. So I only did like an inch, but inch and a half. But see how that's closed? That whole thing will be closed. Then this will come down over top. And then when you look at this, because your seams are open here and they're open here, you've distributed that bulk of that seam. And then this will be, this will go inside. Now this is will be sewn to your lining. If you don't have the back neck facing, your lining will come all the way up to here. And you'll just go like that. Now some of your patterns will have a notch collar, but they'll kind of cheat and just have you sew the collar and stick it in like a regular collar. And that only works if your fabric is quite thin. If you've got bulky, like a lightweight, if you have a heavier weight, bulky, then this is the way to go. In fact, I want all of you to do it this way so you can learn how to do traditional tailored collar. And if you notice here on the back, Notice how this collar comes down just past this seam so that you don't see your next seam. And you can actually match, if you've got plaids or something, you can actually match your plaids coming down here. You see that center back? Well, this one is on the bias, so that won't match up. But right here, you can match this so that your seams can actually come down if you have a plaid or something. Okay, there you have it, tailored collar.